We'll call the meeting to order. It's seven o'clock on February twelfth, which is my son's birthday. Um, let the record show that um, all the current board members are here. Um, Marianne Naslin is on Zoom. Dave and myself are in person, and our student rep is all the way over there. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and do a flag salute. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any changes? Yeah, just going to add an update on the transportation cooperative. Charlie's going to give sort of an overview of the moving in process, where we are currently, why it uh, went from December to January to get moved in with the fire marshal, and also update the um, failed heating system in the gym of this building. So let's do that after their presentation, so then they don't have to stay extra for things they might not want to stay for. All right, public comment. Before we get to public comment, we're gonna do, um, and just so you know, the vote is after public comment. So you guys have to sit there for a little longer. Um, last week or last meeting, we went over some of the concerns that were raised on social media, and we addressed those concerns. So we're gonna do, an, everyone that we talked to really liked that. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of that today. And I will, I'm not going to read all of it because um, it's a lot, but we will address some of the issues that um, had been brought up. Um, first one was the transportation center prioritized over elementary schools and um, why haven't the facilities been open and shown to the public. Um, obviously, a transportation center does not cost the same as a new elementary school does, so um, both need to happen. That one happened first um, because the state paid about four million of the cost and we only paid 4.5 million um, with levy money. It will be paid off at the end of 2026. Nothing else will be owed on it. Um, there will be an open house. We had a delay because of the fire marshal um, waiting to get finished with the permits. So um, it's good that there's water. I heard there might not be water, um, but it's coming along really nice. I went, Charlie gave me a tour and it looks great. Um, another comment, and I don't think that's in here, but someone had brought up, you know, that um, the board is getting this brand new fancy room at the transportation co-op. Charlie has, um, there's a nice space for training. So when we have teacher training, things like that, not all, all of you have been in the district office conference room. It's really small and it's just, it's really crowded. So it'll be really nice to have trainings there. We can have community um, meetings there. And yes, the board will have their meetings there also. You'll have better chairs, I think, to sit in. So um, that's a good use of space. Thank you, Charlie. Um, middle school roof, allowing the middle school roof to leak for extended period of time. Um, we had multiple roofers come out, patch the roof, didn't work for an extended period of time. Um, it looks like that some corners were cut during the 1990s um, edition, so it was difficult to um, keep up with that all those years, um, but they did try. Neglecting the old transportation facilities um, and kind of not putting money into it. We didn't want to put a lot of money into a building that was falling down. So just enough money into it to kind of keep it going until we were able to get our new building. Um, and something, you know, about the condemned letter. The board didn't know about the condemned letter um, once it was provided to us. Um, we did communicate that the building was deemed unsafe. Um, high school turf is an issue, apparently, that was brought up. Um, it failed compression testing. So if it fails compression testing, you cannot use the field. We had to get a new field. We got a new field. Um, you know, if it was 
communicated in a way that um, you didn't like. Um, we apologize for that, but you couldn't use the field until it was fixed. We had a new field. So that's kind of the bottom line on that one. Um, the bond caters to the new developments. No, um, there'll be a new K-4 school there. Gold bar will be new because it's getting an addition and it's getting an update. So all the elementary kids are going to go to a new school, whether it's in Sultan or in Gold Bar, they're both going to be new schools. Um, and the high school, we have the STEM building that we've submitted to Capital Facilities or Capital Budget Committee, right Dan? Capital Budget Committee it, it was in the state, uh, the House of Representatives. And so we've been working directly with uh, Representative Eslick and Representative Steele. You can, you can read this document in its entirety. It's posted in this board packet. It's just our best effort to try to quell things that um, get out there and gather steam or whatnot, or it's just to answer these questions. Because people don't always call and ask these questions. I received three calls directly, really great conversations. Conversations are over. People tend to go post their questions online, and you know what follows after that. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and that's why we're covering this. We don't want to spend a ton of time on it, um, but if misinformation's out there, we have to address it because our community needs to know actual truth. Um, property, and well, let's not talk about that one. Um, property for the new transportation center. This has gone, I've been here for two years, and this has been brought up like 20 times. The transportation, um, they couldn't buy the two properties. And even, I don't know if you guys saw, but Braun Journey, um, who is well respected, responded about the same issue and said that um, those properties didn't work out. So saying that we could have had a different property for less money previously, it's just not true. So um, property purchased by the high school. Um, underutilized. Um, it's a little over two acres was purchased across the street from the high school. Um, it provides options. We hear a lot of, why didn't you plan? Okay, we bought some property, that's planning. But then you're upset that we bought property. So, you know, the district is trying to plan. Um, if anything, you know, we can sell it um, for a profit and use that money for other things. Impact fees, um, oh, for mining zone. There's no mining zone. Dan, do you want to touch on that real quick? Yeah, this is, um, there, on state properties, there's a lot of what are called mining rights. And so there's what's called a resource mineral, re, mineral resource overlay. There's probably 165,000 acres in Snohomish County alone that are mineral resource overlay. So. I, while I understand the concern, I have a little bit of experience in the mining world being, a, I was, used to be superintendent of the public. We had active gold mines going on as, as that was happening. Very complicated situation. There's certainly a possibility, but I think to say that there's going to be a mine that would show up, you know, within a mile of a, a school zone is, is really reaching. Um, that, you know, as I said, there's 165,000 acres of this mineral resource overlay. We have significant protections built into the, the quick claim deed, and the, the plan in 2025 is to actually move that property into the city, whether a school ends up on it or not, is to that. You have even more protections. And so, while I understand the concern, you know, a mine, uh, somebody tried something about 20 or 25 years ago, well before I was here, and it didn't go through, and so I think I think it would be even harder to do that. The mineral resource overlay is is about 2,000 feet away from us, and so we're zoned our, when I say we, the property we just acquired, we just closed the deal on the 6th, is an R5, I mean it's zoned for um, residential five acres. You, you do it through a, um, uh, a um, there's a permit you can get. It's, we, we've worked with a land attorney, we've worked with, uh, um, DNR, we've worked with lots of folks to make sure that we're uh, um, doing this correctly. And there's, you know, it's, land is complicated, very complicated. But to, to be able to get um, what we got for $455,000 that has 33 to 60 year Douglas fir on it, um, 
it, it gives the district some options, you know, down the road or even sooner. When we first started planning to have an elementary school, knowing we needed another one, part of it was on the, the, the first part of the plan was on the back side of the middle school, you know, we're, we, because we've got to do something. I mean, we, we can't keep doing what we're doing, and that was kind of the, the deal. And then this, I discovered this property through working with DNR, and, and, and so the people say, well, you're going to build it on a mining zone. Well, number one, there's no such thing as a mining zone. There is what's called a mineral resource overlay. Lots of mineral rights with state properties. And so this is actually on, the, the closest spot is property that's owned by the Parks Department. And so, anyway. Another question. more than everybody needed to know. Another question was why buy property when you don't, the bond hasn't passed yet? He just said it was four hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars for how many acres? Forty-nine acres. Yeah. So that's. I mean, we log it and we could sell it in the future. It's a great. Even if there's no school there, it's could be a money maker for the district. My time is shorter rather than longer. It'll be an asset for the community for years to come, and that's really the thinking. At some point, there has to be a school there. So yes. It's just now or later. Yes. And it's cheaper to do it now than it will be later. Um, the next one on here is our former school board chair um, responsible for superintendent salary and pay increases. And then um, in turn, the superintendent was in charge and responsible for the board chair's spouse's salary. That's just really insulting to anyone that has um, done any work. For the school so we're not going to touch on that purposely running levies and bonds in february um the citizens facility advisory committee which is made up of our fellow citizens not all people that work for the school or a part of the school um, they finished the work on the bond in october of 2023 recommended it to the board um, that they put the issue on the ballot as soon as possible by the time that they presented it to the board um, and the board accepted, there wasn't the required 45 days that you have to have before it goes on the ballot. So it could not have gone on the November ballot. So we, the next spot was February because we did not want to wait until the next November. Things are just gonna be even more expensive and the problem's gonna get worse. Um, let's see, I think I think the last one I want to touch on is the um, perceived issue of the interest. Um, when someone says it's 80 million and the interest is in the payments, that's the truth. The 80 million does not include the interest. We need to remember that we have people that aren't in finance there are supporters, um, people out there, parents and volunteers that may have worded things where it might have been a little confusing. But there was no hiding anything from anyone. Um, it has been explained, charts have gone out, said $80 million is the bond. Those interest payments are, are in your payment chart that shows you what you're gonna pay back. It's the same way Every other district in the state advertises their bonds. I can pull one up on the computer. Um, so we did not do anything differently than any other district in the state. And that's kind of the bottom line with that. So that is that. One other thing I wanted, to, we're gonna start doing is um, we had questions from last meeting, um, just addressing those and making sure that those um, questions were addressed. Jeff, you had questions and you told me that they were answered last meeting, is that correct? Can you refresh me? <laughs> <laughs> no, you had questions and then you talked to Dan and everybody for a while and then outside you said that your questions were answered. I just want to make sure well, that- Well, actually I had, I had suggestions. Okay. Yeah, the, the, it was uh, to get more bond votes. <laughs> I had a list of suggestions. Okay. Yeah. So you're good Thank with, you oh, I just yeah. want to make sure that if we have questions that at the next meeting, we make sure that those questions were answered and that um, if, if they weren't, then we need to make sure that they are. Great idea. Okay, thank you. All right, now we have public comment. Jeff. Oh, no, no, no. you are up. 
We've got this over here because it's easier to see. Because when Dave was on last time, it was we realized that it's hard to see. I like it over here because now I can look at the board and the audience instead of having to, you know, turn around behind my back. Okay, okay. You have three minutes, Jeff. All right, thank you. Greetings, thank you, board and administration, for allowing me to speak. I'm Jeff Festus, and I reside in Stark, Washington. And thanks, Gigi, for bringing up social media. That's what I want to talk on about tonight. Uh, uh, last meeting, I brought up some suggestions to encourage uh, uh, more bond votes. And uh, um, so this week, uh, I, this meeting, I thought I would touch on a few things I've seen on social media for the audience and, um, and uh, as well as the, the board and administration. And so I thought I'd refresh myself with a couple of words and definitions and hope we can strive for a more civil community. Um, so the first word, of course, is bully. And uh, I looked that up, and it's a person who habitually seeks to harm, intimidate, or coerce. Uh, it's a person who purposely hurts, intimidates, threatens, or ridicules another repeatedly. Those are the nouns. The verb is to use language or behavior that is cruel, insulting, threatening, or aggressive. Um, then I kind of dug into this a little bit deeper because it's the intimidation part got to me and I realized that Constitution actually says about intimidation that it's unlawful for two or more persons to agree to injure, threaten, or intimidate a person in the United States in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured by the Constitution or laws of the United States or because of his or her having exercised such a right. So I thought more about this and I thought, well, what's the difference between democracy and suffrage? And suffrage means the right to vote and when citizens have the right to vote for or against laws and leaders, the government is called a democracy. Voting is one of the most important principles of government in a democracy. And then I thought more, well, what do we mean by inclusive? If you describe a group or organization as inclusive, you mean that it allows all kinds of people to belong to it, rather than just one kind of person, and not excluding any of the parties or groups involved in something. Non-exclusive, non-inclusive language are words or phrases that treat people unfairly, are insulting, or exclude a person or a group of people. If this happens in the workplace, people may become silenced. They may no longer feel accepted or part of the team. Only an exclusive peace process will end the conflict. Um, exclusive is the opposite. It, it, it many times means pushing something out of some sort of group, thus creating an element of specialness because of restricted entrance. Targeted harassment means systematic harassment, which purpose is to silence the victim and affect the victim's social or professional activities. And I thought I'd end real quick with a quote, something positive and uplifting. Uh, kindness. Kindness is doing what you can, where you are, with what you have. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Richard. <coughs> All right, you have three minutes. It's actually a big help, Kayla. Thank you for yeah. putting that up there. I know I get long winded sometimes. So, uh, my name is Richard Kennison Goldbar. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak uh, this evening. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about the field, um, since you had brought it up earlier, is the board knew about the field starting to go downhill and needing to be replaced a year prior to it becoming such a hot ticket issue before it failed the compression test. Um, that was acknowledged by board members at the tour we did with Charlie. We walked around during the levy period. Um, they knew about it ahead of time. It could have been done over the summer, but it wasn't. It was waited until the school year started and then it failed, so that became the issue. And that's why it was such a big problem. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dan, Gigi, um, even going back to Russ, Byron, and them um, for uh, all the support and mentorship they've given me in the past, the motivation I've needed um, to get more involved in schools, volunteering, whether it's a watchdog, whether it's you know chaperoning this, chaperoning field trips, or like the dance we're doing on um, Friday. 
Um, I'd like to thank you for all that support and all, all that um, motivation um, that you've given me in the past. Um, I think that you all saw the qualities I possess and can bring to the district. And um, I felt like you might think that the district might be a little bit more of that. Um, and uh, now that Byron has stepped down, I, th I feel like it's a perfect opportunity for me to try to get involved with the school board, and even more so with the district on top of the volunteer work I'm already doing. So I will be pursuing the, the district two seat um, coming up. Kayla, I know you got my information sheet today. I'll get my resume and my cover letter into you soon. Um, I feel like it's the right time for me, um, given the, the issues we've had with the community, with the school board, uh, the lack of trust. Um, I feel like the honesty Transparency and accountability is something I can help bring back to the school board and the school district, kind of help bridge that gap between the district and the community, um, giving them a louder voice in how things are done, um, less kind of, you know, sitting back and just waiting to be told what's going to happen. I feel like them hearing their voices, making sure all of their concerns are heard, um, would help bridge that gap. Um, also, without being able to he have their voices heard without fear of being, you know, attacked or um, harassed on social media by large groups of people just because they're asking questions. Um, I think that's gonna go a long way with making sure that community members feel included in the decision-making process that the school district does. You all do make decisions overall, um, but I feel like having more say-so in it or more, more uh, dogs in the fight, if you will, um, would, would help bridge that um, moving forward. Um, and, you know, I've, I've discussed this with my kids multiple occasions, one in high school, one in middle school. Uh, we talk about stuff all the time, um, issues they have at school one way or another. Um, being in the position that we're in, doing the right thing for people who are, you know, afraid to stand up for themselves. Some of us have to do it, and I feel like this is my opportunity. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Whitney. Hi. I'm sorry. Oh, super Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, I was waiting for the time. Oh, okay. um, so I just want to come to you guys today, obviously as a parent in the community, just with some general concern. Um, I would say after watching and listening to the application process tonight, I do have concern regarding some of the questions um, being brought forth. I feel like education wasn't a priority tonight in the topic of conversation. Uh, there weren't questions regarding education, values in education. I feel like this should be at the forefront of the application process. Obviously, levies and bonds are really important, but for me, the kids come first. Obviously, levies and bonds are a portion of that, but values. Um, I mean, questions like what's in the best interest of our kids, where our schools are at now, where people feel like they could be in the future. I have a child in high school right now. I'll soon have a two-year-old that will be going through elementary, middle school, and high school, and I want success for both of them. Um, I feel like sometimes, unfortunately, I'm not seeing that now. Um, I do know that there's amazing teachers in our district. I do think that there's lots of training opportunity, though, that should be presented and available. And I do think a lot of our what we're doing now needs to be looked at at the board and who we're hiring to sit here today. Like, there's two open positions. It's been a little rough hiring for, what was it, District 1. We had some applicants um, and then some that fell through. My question is why? Um, you know, where are people that have the education to sit here and the background, the know of schools, how they work, OSPI, FTEs? Um, another concern I have is that it is being echoed throughout the community, and that's coming down to me and other parents that board members are choosing to leave because they feel like they can't make positive change or change at all. And that's really disheartening for me to hear. So my other question is, um, are exit interviews being done? And if so, can those be made public to the community? I'd really be interested to hear you know, why at least the last two candidates left. I was really discouraged to see position two open. Um, and I think a lot of other parents are as well. So my hope just moving forward is uh, more transparency, more communication, and then who we do fill these positions with. People do have experience. They know about education. 
the field and they do have value for our kids and good intentions like moving forward. I know you guys do, but like let's see where we're going. Let's make positive change and who's going to be the action behind that? Who's going to make the change happen? I want my kids to have really successful school careers. I want them to go to college and that starts with teachers and teaching and how they're taught now. Teachers today are the reflection of if a lot of kids choose to go to college or not. Um, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Andrea, Andrea. Oh, I think I put yes because we're down the line. Oh, okay. Sorry. Fine. <laughs> That is it. So those are all the speakers. All right. <laughs> we are moving on to candidate vote. And uh, we appreciate um, both of you coming in and um, applying for this position. As you know, these positions are elected positions. Um, if uh, position becomes open, then the board has to fill that position um, using the um, applicants that actually apply. Um, it's not always easy getting people to apply um, to be on the board, um, but we thank um, both of you um, for applying, and we would be um, lucky and happy to have either one of you, but we had to uh, pick one. So we are going to vote, and it will be a uh, roll call vote. And we'll start with Marianne. Marianne, your choice. I would, I would like to vote for Isaac. Thank you. Dave? Mm -hmm. Isaac Huddy. Um, Isaac Huddy. And that's it. But Tara, thank you so much. And I hope that you will continue to be involved because we have other committees, um, Whitney back there, Mental Health Committee. So there's lots of um, other opportunities and um, We'd love for you to continue to help. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that was also a, a downplay that I had when I entered, when I applied was that I don't have a lot of volunteer with you know kids because I'm also only 32 and a young mom. So yeah, you know. And we also, just pe people know, we also, it's not just the conversations that we had. We had um, cover letters, we had resumes, and all kinds of other stuff to get you know to know the candidates. And that might not have come out as much, but um, perfect. Okay, you got that down, Kayla. So Thank you, you get yeah, to. Yeah. Well, I, from what I, you know, yeah. <laughs> what I interact with him, little would it be, you know, and obviously his wife is in the as a teacher as well. I think that he's a great fit. So, you know, I think that's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, works. Just come out when you're when I'm not sure whatever district you're in when that opens up yeah. next time. It is the district. There you go. Um, so there's, I, I just want to make a, a lot of people have come forward, but they're not in the right district. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one yeah. of the challenges that's come up. We've had lots of folks come up. And a few years ago, we looked at, at, of the five positions, making a couple of them at large to make this easier. But it's a fairly complicated process. I can't just go do that. But you, your willingness to come in here, I mean, I, I'm trying to think, gosh, what would it be like to be in one of your shoes? You come here to do this. You're not quite sure what you're getting into, and then you get voted out. You know, but anyway, I appreciate what you guys are doing. So really, especially like when you see all of the stuff going on and social media and everything like that, it doesn't make people want to do this. I mean, it really doesn't. So um, I applaud both of you for you know putting that aside. And you know. all right, you get to be sworn in. Yeah. You're gonna do that, and then you get to come sit right here. All right. Lucky you, right? Lucky. <laughs> like, what did I get myself into? Okay. So I'm gonna, I know. We're going to start right now here. And I'll just, so I'll just I read a little bit and you can follow what I read. And, you know, that make sense. This isn't the smoothest operation. Got it. Right. Okay, if you raise your right hand, both of office, state of Washington, county of Snohomish. I, Isaac Cuddy, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I do. Can you repeat what I said? No. Uh, I, Isaac Cuddy, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Washington State. 
and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office and school board director. Keep going. For school district number 311. 311, district uh, position number one, according to the best of my ability. And that's that's it. You're, you're, you're in. Subscribe and sworn. I told you to pull up. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And then I will put the presentation on here. So, all right. Let's see. So we have presentation of recommendation from the secondary schedule committee. You guys ready? Yes. And so everybody knows this is a committee, and they'll probably go into it also, that um, met for lots and lots of hours. Lovely early mornings. Um, and I was actually on the committee with these lovely people, and um, I'm sure they're probably tired of seeing me by now, but... Um, we didn't vote you off the island. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please? No. All right. Good evening, directors. Welcome, Director Huddy. Uh, this evening, we're going to speak to you a little bit. I'm Paul Douglas. I'm the Assistant Superintendent, uh, Overseas Student Services. Um, as we move up this evening and talk about uh, the people on our committee, they'll introduce themselves as they come up. Uh, we had a number of people on the committee. As you see in your board packet, there was an MOU, a memorandum of understanding that was established during negotiations this summer with the Sultan Education Association and the school administration. Um, in a, a negotiation, we agreed that we would start this committee and take a look at the secondary schedule. Essentially, it's the bell schedule at the high school. And in looking at that, it'd be represented by five people from um, SEA, the Selton Education Association, and five administrators from the, the central office. So we formed that committee. It began in September. We had some deadlines that we needed to make. Um, that's kind of outlined in the packet there. We made those deadlines. We met 10 times for over uh, 30 hours is what it came down to. Uh, that's why Gigi's kind of rolled her eyes. And, so. but, they like early mornings. So. Right. So that's, that's kind of the, the basic process. I'm going to let Laura come up and kind of talk from there, uh, where we moved from there. And as we got together, we established some norms. We established some non-negotiables. I think that's in the appendix of your packet there. Um, and then we established some rubrics, and she's going to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. So, I'm Laura Green, the assistant principal over at the high school. Um, well, yes, many hours, over 30 hours together, we spent looking at, well, first we had to look at what did we want. We had some non-negotiables. And the non-negotiables were that the student, um, the schedule must promote student learning. It had to make sure that the students were getting enough time to process information, think through what they needed um, to learn, um, and teachers had enough time to really teach the content. We also decided that it had to be supported by data, research, and evidence. So we couldn't just go, I like that schedule, it looks good to me, let's go with it. We really wanted to make sure that it was backed up by other school districts that looked like ours, that it was going to work for our students. Um, we needed to make sure that it was fiscally responsible, because we all know that money in districts are very tight. Um, we needed to make sure that it was sustainable wellness for the students and staff. So the students were getting the SEL, they were feeling good at school, and so was the staff. And we also really wanted to make sure that it um, promoted um, supports for underserving and underperforming students. The other piece in this is we're also looking at how we could also support those students that need a little extra and how we could maybe get some more challenging coursework into our um, day. Now, a recommendation came, and the longer we talked, we all came in at different places. Nobody was like this, well, people were like, I want this schedule, I want this schedule. This is what we thought we wanted separately. But then as we came together, more and more we're like the research Everything's telling us we really need to do the four by four schedule. So we went from the seven period to we're now making a recommendation that we go to the four by four schedule at Sultan High School. 
And we're going to have Andrea and Katie tell you more about that schedule because it's very different than I think a lot of people are used to. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the four by four um, is essentially a block schedule. And right now our students are on a seven period block schedule in which students have access to seven credits each school year. The classes change at the semester. So English is an entire year. You take the first part of English. 10 the, um, semester one and the second part of English 10 in semester two. The four by four students take a total of eight credits in a given school year um, at minimum. And the students essentially take care of four classes one semester and four other classes <coughs> second semester with some wiggle room for some classes to be year long options because we do want to um, continue to support our programs that we've been growing in our district like sports medicine, band, um, AVID program. Um, so students take, in this situation, English 10, for example, um, semester one, the entirety of a year's worth of curriculum, but only focusing in on four classes at a time. And then second semester, they would switch to potentially four new, four new classes. Um, again, totally a total of eight credits in a year and 32 credits. Oh, that's, yeah. I was like testing my math right now. Um, 32 credits in a given school year. Can you tell what your position is for those that don't know? I do so, apologize. Um, I was so excited to talk to you sense. about the schedule. It makes sense like what you're saying for what your position is that helps me. I'm really in tune with credits because I am the high school counselor, one of the two high school counselors up at the high school. So my name is Andrea Garibay. Um, Jenny Peterson is the other one. We. Between the two of us, we decided it is very important for a school counselor to be a part of this committee because um, we're definitely coming in from a different angle. So um, when I get excited with the 4x4 four four when it comes to access for students, and I think that's a big part of what the 4x4 four four brings in is opportunity for students. So the current schedule is a seven period, 50 minute period? Approximately. Approximately 50 minute minutes. periods. Yeah. And the new ones will be four periods a day and there'll be 80 minutes apiece? Approximately. Yeah. I understand. So we got longer periods, less shuffling around. Instead of seven, there's only four, right? Correct. That gives the kids more usable time. Was it also looked at to do a late start, like the first period would start at 9.10 and then the last period at the end of the day would end at, say, 3.30? Uh, high school kids, my understanding is that they that was a gear part for of a late our, start. Was that yeah, that up? wasn't part of the, this yeah. committee. This committee well, was only just like the schedule as far as like seven period, six period, four okay. period. Within, so that wasn't looked at. Yeah, yeah. within the time. <laughs> within the time frame that we have. Is that something to be looked at in the future? Though? It could. That would be up to us. We but the, okay. yeah, yeah. evaluate lots of. We're also on the committee, so we'll help answer some questions. We did look at all sorts of schedules. And one of the types that we discussed was a six period day with like a zero period or a seven period, mm -hmm. which might be what you're talking about too, where some students might come in early or some students might stay later. But okay. that was not one that we chose. Got it. Thank you. Go, go ahead. Hi, I am <coughs> Catherine Power. I'm a teacher at the high school. Um, I'm also an ASB advisor and coach. So I'm going to talk about this added, what we're tentatively calling Turk time. So it would be built into four out of the five days, and it's a half hour period that actually can be utilized for a lot of pretty neat things that some of our students currently don't have access to because a lot of things take place outside of the day. So this would be a great time for additional intervention. They could go directly to the teacher that maybe they need to finish the test with or get extra help on. Um, it can also be used for enrichment activities. So instead of having to mess up our normal school schedule, we can just use that time for, let's say, a pep assembly. It's already built into that day. It can also be used to um, ha hold some of our clubs. So now kids aren't having to come in before or after school to go to these clubs. Um, they can utilize that time during this, this Turk time. That helps increase the um, equitability for the access to the clubs, for access to interventions that we already have. Um, it also would help to, um, sorry, I lost my place, support the, what we would call the exec executive function. So sometimes we have to have like class meetings. 
So when seniors need their type of gowns, like we have to pull them out of their normal class schedule, this would just allow that time to already be built in. Hey, whoever come in and, um, you know, tell the seniors how to order their cap and gowns. And it also supports uh, the PLC and common planning as well during that, that particular uh, Turk time. For the rest of the benefits, so when considering the 4x4, what we call 4x4 plus block schedule for our students, some of the potential benefits that we identified, it would help to increase focus and energy and deeper learning. A teacher having more time with a student in the classroom can get in depth with their um, kind of activities more instead of having a lab go from day one to day two, which oftentimes students kind of like lose the point of the lab. Now they've got that time to just complete the lab, <coughs> do all the finish up and follow up work that, that they need. Uh, improve student well-being. Now they're not managing or trying to shuffle seven classes with seven different types of homework. It's four. It's very focused. They're like, all right, I got these four. I know, know what I'm doing in my day. More opportunities for enrichment. Um, we did bring in at some point towards the end our CTE director. And you know we can potentially even extend some of our CTE classes instead of being you know, two-year programs, the opportunity to add that fourth year, uh, or sorry, third year, our kids that come in in algebra now instead of only being able to finish at pre-calculus have the opportunity to even finish at the calculus level. So it's really adding two to our, our higher achieving students. It supports and aligns to the district goals of our PLC work, in, um, AVID, access to higher rigor classes, um, in-class interventions for our IEP kids and our 504 kids. And then um, increases the opportunity to build relationships in the classroom. So now a teacher doesn't have 170 kids. You know, they're they're cut down almost in half that they're getting to know and being able to really like engage with and understand how those individual kids work. Um, and then provides opportunities to provide a um, continuum of services in the general education classroom. So offers more tier one and two, tier two intervention time, which essentially means some more supports for kids that might be struggling either in school at all, like as a whole or in a particular class or even just in a particular uh, unit. Katie touched a bit on this, um, but it, just explaining it further, um, with a four by four schedule, there would also be an increase, the hope would be an increase in uh, higher level <coughs> courses at the high school. And the hope would be that if students have more access to these higher level courses, they don't have to seek out other programs outside of our district, like Running Start, um, in which we are then keeping the FTE within our district. Um, the big piece to me as a school counselor is making sure that our students have access. So um, we had uh, one of the benefits is increased access for elective courses and career exploration courses, more specifically for our students on IEPs and our students in the multilingual service program. Uh, right now, our students are taking those classes as their elective courses. So with having the opportunity to earn an additional credit in the year, then they now have the opportunity to actually take those courses that will help them prepare for the careers that they are aiming for. Um, and then along with that one, um, with, with the 4 by 4 schedule, a student now has the opportunity to complete a CTE course pathway, which is one of the options for uh, the graduation pathways that are required by the state for a student to meet for graduation. So right now, a student does one credit of CTE one year and then the second credit in a second school year. Um, and with the 4x4, four four, a student can do one credit first semester and the second credit in the second semester of that school year. So a student has, so hopefully that would be um, more in support of um, increasing on-time graduation if the students that are transferring to us maybe don't have a pathway met at that point. Um, we have that opportunity to meet it in a single year um, to support them in continuing their education after high school. Um, and then another one that we wanted to highlight um, when it comes to spec scores, currently our students are taking the Smarter Balance in 10th grade. 
Our students take Algebra 1 in 9th grade, typically, Geometry in 10th grade, and Algebra 2 in 11th grade. So our students are taking the test in 10th grade, but Smarter Balance has Algebra 2 components. So our students are taking the Smarter Balance without having the necessary math skills um, to pass the test. Um, so with, with the 4x4 schedule, a student has that opportunity to reach Algebra 2 in 10th grade, not just for the students that are starting um, in advance in geometry in 10th grade, so those students that started their high school level math in middle school, this gives the opportunity for all students to be able to reach Algebra 2 by 10th grade and hopefully increase those higher test scores in the Smarter Balance. Um, so some of the evidence and research, uh, we included some links on there that we reviewed. Um, but one of the ones I wanted to highlight is the fifth one on that list, and that's uh, the effects of block scheduling by the School Superintendents Association. Um, we did honestly have a lot of hard discussions, but we really tried to refocus on what is the data showing, what are the surveys, st staff and student surveys showing, and this research, uh, this article I really appreciated because it talked about the transition. Like yes, it's, it would be an overwhelming transition that first year, but what this, um, the staff and the students reported is that after they got settled into the new schedule, they actually became less stressful. And some of the things that block schedules brought are things that we want to see in our school too. We want to see increased attendance. We want to see decrease, uh, decrease in discipline rates. We want to see a decrease in failure rates. And that's what some of the research is saying about that. So some of the implementation, like as we kind of got towards the end, we realized that like implementation was really not what as a group we were being asked to do, but we do have some recommendations for implementation. So we really want to highlight the importance of intentional thoughtful implementation. Uh, in our committee, we've identified areas to consider for implementation. We recognize our list is not comprehensive and additional work needs to be completed for a successful rollout. We trust in the high school building leadership team to work and carry out the planning forward with the collaboration of the stakeholders. So having the building leadership team at the high school really still working with the district. The implementation committee will need to address logistical considerations, so scheduling and adjustments, student and parent communication, lunches, ALE staff, and schedule rollout, as well as uh, credits for increasing the number of credits available. Uh, part of that implementation would then to be to suggest that graduation like credit requirements increase along with that. Create an implementation timeline, um, training and then community involvement. So those are just some of the things that as a committee we want to make sure are recognized as part of potentially being um, implementation things. And carefully addressed yes. and planned being well thought. So while basically no schedule is perfect, uh, we do as a team strongly believe that this 4x4 schedule gives us that structure to address the needs of our students right now. Um, and it addresses our non-negotiables. Um, it really hit all the marks. Um, and I want to highlight what Katie was saying in regards to also our recommendation with the 4x4 schedule is also to um, address the graduation requirements to more appropriately match with the increased access to, um, to credits each school year. And um, just highlighting the commitment to work co collaboratively and uh, to ensure a smooth, with, with the school board and stakeholders, to ensure a smooth and successful transition um, should this be approved. Um, on a personal note, I also want to thank um, just the team members. I don't get to work with other staff members and other uh, administrators as often, so I really appreciate the hard conversations that we had. Um, they were some, there were some tough conversations, but I appreciated always being able to centralize on what is best for our kids. Um, so I do appreciate all of you and um, creating that a safe space to have those open discussions. I appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Yeah.
I'd add just one one last piece. You know, having sat in a number of negotiations over my time and education, uh, all times what comes out of negotiations is always always favorable on either party's end, and it's something that you just have to do. Uh, I, I think this is a committee when we originally started out was something that we had to do. It was designed, uh, or what we ended up coming up with is not something we had to do, it was something we wanted to do. And as Andrea said, sometimes we had some tough conversations, but ultimately we had a very cooperative, collaborative group, and I'm very happy to have been part of that group. I'd like all the folks that sat on that committee to stand up, introduce themselves, and I personally want to thank them for being on the committee. It was my pleasure to work with them. Are we are going to start with you. I'm Kim Gillery. I'm the assistant principal at the middle school. I teach ELA at the middle school. I'm Brianne Lemus. I'm the uh, technology integration TOSA for the district. And I'm Crystal Popkin, the director of human resources. And we also have Nate Trichler um, on our team, who was honestly a very thoughtful man in this process. So. And Gigi. Oh, and Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> um, at this time, do you all have any questions for us um, to help understand or in your decision-making process? I want to make it clear that we're not suggesting that we do this next year. Right? We are sure, asking the implementation committee to see. Right. right. So I want to, like, this committee came up with the idea and did all the research for this. So then it gets passed on to an implementation committee that would say, this can be done this year, this can be done next year. So this it's, is what we'll need. This is not the committee that basically does the implementation of it. And we're not voting on anything tonight. We're getting the information and then asking them questions. And then if there are other questions that come up, we can get those from them as well. So. But we are hoping a decision can be made sooner rather than later so that we can move on because there is there is a list of things that we want to make sure that get appropriately addressed for something like this too. Yeah. I for one would hate to see the momentum be lost. So what, so, what do we need to do next and how can we get that on the schedule? What, what were you going to say again? So I was just, I've got a couple questions. So I think one of the reasons for the delay is the needed training to take a class of 50 minutes and make sure that there's engaging learning for 80 minutes, which is a big difference. So that's one thing, correct? Obvious thing. Second thing, I've just got a question about the schedule interventions. I didn't see PLCs in here. Is that part of the intervention time? So, so some of the idea behind um, the like a teacher's prep period would be then to make sure that all of like the English department has prep together so that some of that time can be dedicated to the PLC work. And going to a four period day means that that is more likely to happen. Um, so that was part of the idea behind that is that we would then use the, kind of the prep periods to schedule those PLCs and then that PLC work can be done during those times. And PLCs but, was a topic that was yeah, talked yeah. about. And a lot. also, this is a Monday through Thursday current schedule. Friday would still exist with whatever ERP schedule is at that time. Yeah. So PLCs would still occur on Fridays. And for those that are not familiar with ERP, early release Fridays, 90 minute early release. So, whatever questions, and then we can decide if we want to. Mary Ann, do you have any questions? If you do, yeah. pop back in. I do not have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Cameron, do you have questions? Question. Have you asked students how they feel about this? Because this is something that dictates them and is going towards them. Have you asked students how they would feel about this four period day? That's my one big question. Have you actually asked students how they feel about that and would they be willing to have it? I asked my student. <laughs> okay. I think that's part of what we were, what we kind of came to with the implementation is really including the community, students, all stakeholders. Like our job was to come up with what we felt would be the best schedule and then 
as we continued working on that and really dug into it and really got into some hard conversations, it was, I think, pretty apparent. A lot of work that has to go into to make it really successful. And part of that is hearing students' voice, hearing teachers' voice, hearing community's voice to really make it successful. And we did use surveys from us where we're asking students about what they liked about the schedule, what they didn't like. So we used some of that information from how students were feeling about that seven, seven day or seven period schedule and we applied it to what are the things that students were not liking about that and that was part of so it wasn't necessarily do you like this four by four it was we see the concerns that students had at this time and thank you for that as a parent of two kids who went through a four by four block with a plus period um, just not that they are here to report to you, but I have two daughters that went through this type of schedule at a different district, and both very different learners, one who needed a lot of extra help for um, learning challenges that she had, and one that's very bright and took all accelerated courses, and they both excelled and really enjoyed this schedule because it was very manageable for different reasons and with different outcomes, but um, it worked well for both. And Cameron, the implementation would be based upon where students are in their, you know, if you're a junior or senior, it's going to look different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I imagine that juniors that are going to be seniors next year, it's not going to be four by four mm -hmm. for them. I mean, it might be a schedule, but their credits and things would look different. I cannot change everything all at one time. The other thing that we utilize is our experiences with our students. Uh, right now, again, seven periods, Sultan High School, and we also have an alternative school, alter, uh, an ALE school, um, so SVO, SVO is three periods a day, um, and frequently that's part of the conversations with school counselors and administrators, and, um, and so part of that, one of the reasons why most, most students will say they want to do something like SVO is the manageable workload, the working with three classes at a time versus seven. Uh, so it's using that student experience as well. Do you have any questions? Uh, oh, go ahead. You have my sec sorry, my second question is, how did you kind of plan on keeping kids engaged that whole 80 minutes? Because I know of enough students that they struggle with the roughly 50 minutes that we have in those classes right now, and struggle to even stay engaged in that. And so I'm curious, did you have any thoughts or ideas to keep kids feeling engaged and feel like they're learning a lot while pertaining all of the knowledge they need to know to graduate. So that's part of the implementation process mm -hmm. is like we would be requesting that teachers are going to professional development <laughs> to learn how to teach within that 80 minute class mm -hmm. period because it is different. But one of the other things that it offers is kind of that time for like after a teacher has taught the lesson, now you can actually work on some of that schoolwork and now the, the person that's teaching you that and in theory the expert is there to help you as you're working on your homework so there's kind of two two approaches to that right you teach your kind of your normal 50 minute time now there's a half hour where you can work on your homework with your teacher there and as teachers getting more information on how to structure an 80 minute class period so we've got we've thought a lot about those things and that would be part of the implementation too and a very much topic that also came up for us a lot is engagement in the classroom and echoing what you said, it's a current issue right now and we're truly, we truly think that a 4x4 four four would actually address that engagement. One, obviously first year would be on me, right? Um, but we truly hope that the, the engagement would actually increase with the 4x4 four four schedule. And that's where the staff development needs to mm -hmm. come in, mm -hmm. where teachers are given a tool. Their toolbox needs to be a little more full mm -hmm. with some of the teaching strategies that would best engage students for that amount of time. Okay, sorry, my last <laughs> question. So if, if we did this schedule, how would we still incline like Snow Isle? Would that still be an option for students? And if so, how would that work? Would they still test three periods at school, at the setting school, and then going to Snow Isle their normal time to still make that time? How would you correspond that still working? So we looked at the schedule and we would have it where you would still be able to take two of those classes in the morning mm -hmm. and then you would be able to go in the afternoon. So it shouldn't impact So it wouldn't hurt you even it if should you not impact okay. you in any way. Totaling four credits mm -hmm. um, at SHS. One, two, three, four, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. As compared to three credits, which mm -hmm. you currently have access to. So actually increasing the mm -hmm. access to the SHS courses and still doing some.
Anything else, Karen? I know. It's very hard. No, that's good. Do you have questions, I think? I'm good. That was a great one that she just did. Dave, any questions? No. You guys did a great job. And I want to mention, too, that this was something that came up last, I don't know when that was, June, um, that was important to um, a large group of people. And I'm glad that we saw it through. To, um, to do this, because this is something that was wanted and we saw it through and we did it. So I'm glad we did that, so. Um, Dan? I just want to say good job, you guys. I, I uh, mm -hmm. really tried to stay hands off at, at the same time, you know, when we kind of closed up, having everybody on board, same way, moving the same direction is really important. And, uh, and I think that probably there's some of, of trying to understand where people are, students, colleagues, etc. cetera. But um, I think there's great possibilities ahead. Especially, you know, you compare it, a good analogy is the kids in SVO that are working on three courses at a time can really dig deep into those and focus rather than trying to keep track of so much. Thank you. I think we're all on the same page. I'm guessing that we want to move forward with an implementation committee. Yeah, yeah I like it. Marianne, shake your head, yes or no? So yeah, we'll want to move forward with that so we can um, touch base. Hopefully, um, you guys maybe have an idea of how you so, want that to be done. Yeah, so that was in the packet. Um, we've asked the BLT, the building leadership team at the high school. We met with them last week, um, and they were receptive. They sent. We took their questions, um, and we were able to get their support. So I think them coordinating and then reaching out to the additional stakeholders that will need to be involved in the district office um, it, to talk about lunches, to talk about what it looks like for programming. Um, so we've already laid that groundwork. Um, so I think really... Can they start tomorrow? I, <laughs> Yes. yes. Yeah. Like, uh, but but realistically, I think as soon as, soon as the board is on, votes to move forward with this, I think that they can hit the ground running and see, does this is this something that's doable for next year? If not, what does it look like? What do we have to lay to make sure that we're able to get this continuing to move forward? Can we just do without voting? This is not an action item today. Yeah, I think you can. You can do yeah, that. I don't see why you couldn't. Just add an action to the Would it work? I don't necessarily think we need to vote on it because we all agree that we want to move forward with it. So, so you can, you know, essentially direct that they start the yeah. planning for the implementation process. We'll put it on the next agenda. That's what I. We can't thinking. add an action item that's not 24 hours in advance. Right. We can't do everything we want to do. As much as we would like to do okay. everything we want to do. So thank you guys. Yes. Understanding the time is just a presentation. Yeah. Right. But I think we're all on the same page that we want to move forward with this. So get the implementation committee going. And then at the next meeting, we will officially vote. Um, but they can get sorted whenever they can. Would you, you like us to return at the next meeting? Or do you think you have enough information? I think we have it. If we have other questions, we can get with you guys before the next meeting. You don't need the whole committee. Yeah. But that's one of the things that you are board members, if we have questions, we can ask them before the meeting, so then it's just a little longer. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> he got thrown in there, sorry. Good evening, directors. I'm just uh, going to give some updates on uh, the new transportation uh, maintenance building and um, the heating situation at uh, Fulton Elementary School. Um, the uh, co-op building, uh, we moved in uh, two weeks today. Um, we uh, Move transportation first, and then um, on on that Monday it was a non non student day. The uh, rest of what's getting moved is going to be as we have time. Um, at the very latest, I think spring break we would be completely in. 
um, the there's a lot to move. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces, and there's a lot of work that has to be done besides moving. So we just taking our time and doing it right, and um, setting some new norms as we as we do it. Um, the facility is amazing and wonderful. Yes, the water works. Um, there's a question. Um, there's still a, a few little action items at the building from the uh, the builder, but um, that list is getting smaller all the time. Um, the, the lateness for us moving in there was due to some parameters dictated by the fire marshal's office. Um, what were those? Can you say what they were? Yeah, um, there were items that seemed to appear late in the game at the 11th hour. Items that weren't previously told to you that you needed Correct. to do that were told. Yeah. Not, not only to us, but to the builder. Um, so, for instance, uh, the code for the, the fire hydrants um, is for Snohomish County is different than what Monroe, Sultan, and Goldbar uses. So after the, well, first of all, they put the, the size in that was for our area and they had to purchase new ones to the code, and then we had to purchase adapters so that um, our engines can, can run them. Basically, the, the code now is five inch, and um, our Monroe, Sultan, and Goldbar uses four inch. So we had to also move an antenna. There's uh, it's in a little bit of a hole down there, and so making sure there was a strong enough signal because you, you've got to have the radio access. The, the, the initial plan and the date we had kept pushing out was the 7th 20th. And the idea was is that we weren't going to pay extra to help get moved in. But when we don't have kids on campus, we could have done a lot of that work. Once Christmas came out, we were kind of in trouble, you know, as far as meeting the date. But at the same time, we, we can't even get initial <coughs> occupancy unless the <coughs> fire marshal allows it. And it's a matter of doing it right. And it's frustrating because people work so hard. They stayed within budget and all this stuff. Under budget. budget. But you can't get in. And so that's so that's why it's moved a little slow. We're going to do an open house again this month. And this is the community's building. It, it, um, do we have a date for, for that yet? Are you thinking of any date in particular? Or because the sooner we can get that out sooner, to people, yeah, we'll, the better. We'll get something out in the next okay. couple of days. I would like days. the time to be um, when most of my drivers are not driving so that they can be a part of the of Usually the it would be about a, a three-hour window that you do that so people can drop in as it's convenient. It's not, you know, a program necessarily, but there would be a little one that people can drop in and see what, are, you know, as a taxpayer, what do we pay for here? Yeah. Yeah. A couple different ways to do it. And then my other item is uh, the... Sultan Elementary gym heat, um, which is actually uh, there's three units: one for the kitchen, one for the gym, and one for the stage and um, teacher station. Um, all three of those have failed, um, and um, the replacement cost for like for like is 111,000. That's it. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> Great news, Charlie. <laughs> Okay, approval of SMS WTSA State Conference. <coughs> Hi, so I'm Kim Gilreath again. I'm the assistant principal at the middle school. And um, just to give you a quick history, this year we brought back um, career and technical education programs at the middle school. Um, part of becoming approved by OSPI um, as an official CTE um, program is affiliating with what they call a CTSO or Career and Technical Student Organization. So every course um, that's CTE approved has to have a student organization um, for the kids to also participate in. Student organizations are meant to lead kids towards opportunities in different careers um, that are within the um, what we're teaching in those career and technical education courses. 
as well as provide leadership opportunities. Um, and so for um, the middle school, we chose TSA, which is um, the Technology Student Association. Um, TSA is the only student organization in Washington devoted to STEM and technology um, fields. So the members are interested in careers in architecture, engineering, robotics, construction, manufacturing, film and per video production. Um, there's um, story writing, there's um, future teacher, uh, science teacher, um, there's a whole bunch of um, bioengineering, a whole bunch of cool um, opportunities for students. Um, the way that they promote those is um, students compete um, in different challenges. So they um, pick uh, what areas they're interested in and they prepare um, in a club. Um, setting their um, solution to the problems and then they go compete um, against other members of the state. Um, there's actually over a hundred thousand um, participants or members of um, TSA um, worldwide actually. Um, I've gone to nationals a few times and there's even kids as far away as Japan, Turkey, um, I can't remember where else, Germany, um, but they're from all over the um, country as well as internationally. Um, but for the state competition, um, we so we started the organization in we affiliated at the end of September um, and started the club up in October. We probably had about 40 students participating throughout the year, um, which is huge because in the past they tried to have a science um, club and I think they had one student participating last year. So to see 40 kids come out and really get involved in this was pretty awesome. Um, Ten of those students um, completed everything they needed to on time um, to meet the deadline to be able to go to state. Um, so the state competition is what we're asking for you to approve because it, it requires students to travel overnight. Um, uh, they would be leaving on um, Wednesday, March 13th after school, going down to the Doubletree um, uh, conference center down at SeaTac, and uh, all everything's housed there. Um, they compete in all their different events, as well as having leadership workshops, um, career fairs. Uh, colleges come in and do a bunch of cool stuff with kids, um, and then they have a lot of fun opportunities to interact with kids from all um, different schools. There's about 1,500 kids that attend this event. Um, middle school and high school uh, both attend this event. Um, a lot of our nearby districts participate, including Monroe, Duval, um, well, almost all of them around us actually have TSA chapters. Um, so um, I was a CS, uh, T TSA advisor for six years um, and took kids to nationals um, multiple times. Actually, we took our kids to nationals every year. We just took turns as advisors taking us. That's another um, fun part of it. Um, so what we're asking for approval for is it costs $6,780 to go to state if we have four students per room. Um, or if we wanted to have two students per room, it would be $7,422. Um, it is our district policy for our high school kids to have four to a room when they travel. But we want to have both options available for you to understand. Um, the funds to pay for this will actually be generated by the fact that we are CTE approved now. That actually comes with extra funding um, through a state allocation. Instead of um, you getting 28.53 kids per classroom, it's at 23 kids per classroom. So you get a higher allocation when you're CTE approved. Um, so it will cover the cost of it. Um, but what we need the board approval for is just that we take kids on this overnight experience um, we'll be taking um, or the our advisors we have Riley Moore and Amber Hoffman our two um, CTE teachers that teach the stem science will be going with them um, 10 is a great number to start out with because you can manage it with the two of you pretty well um, and will be there from Wednesday and then come home on Saturday so it's uh, everything's all in the hotel it's really fun food is all included in this price so uh, they feed the kids and see that um, sea tack 
<laughs> Actually, in the atrium upstairs where you eat, there's like there's upstairs and downstairs eating, but you look out at all the planes. It's like right there. You look at everything as here. Are these all so. seniors? Are these are middle, middle schoolers, school, middle school. seventh and eighth graders. Okay. <laughs> Mary Ann, do you have any questions? No, I do not. Dave, do you have any questions? No. Questions? No, sounds good. Do you have any questions? All right, we need a motion to, uh, I think four kids in a room is fine. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. That's either two or four. It's cheaper. Um, so we need a motion to approve the SMS WTSA conference with four students in a room. Motion to approve. I make a motion to approve with four students per room. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds fun. Okay, we have approval of board meeting time change. Dan? So, um, our, our board meetings have been at seven so that we do a study session and a regular board meeting. So that depending on schedules of board members, this is to a certain degree driven some of this. So I think for the business meeting, the, um, the want to move it to 6 p.m. if that works for everybody. Does that work for you, right? I mean, we meet, what, twice a month? Mm -hmm. Twice a month. That's easily yeah. And then for the study session, we can, you know, changing that time as well. We can do it at the same time as six, or we can, you know, some districts do it at five or four. It really depends on what works for folks. I'm here working no matter what. I think six for all of it would be great. Okay, well, let's stick way. with six. Yeah. six. Okay. Okay. I think two. Six o'clock, please. And then if we decide we want to do any of those, like, we can discuss, like, the workshops and things like that. Right. That can be either, like, before or after. Mm -hmm. We want to do that, so. All right. It's probably... And I don't know this for sure. Probably easier for people to attend general public and all of it six. Seven late. Seven I mean, is everybody. Late. I see yeah. other districts they have five or four. So I think six would be great. So do we need to vote on that? Or just I think so you say it and then tell okay. us what date you want to start. All right. We'll make sure we post it. So we don't want to. Do we want to start the next meeting in March? Yes. You guys good with that? That's fine. Okay. So I need a motion to approve a time change for our board meetings from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. starting on, what date is that? It's March 11th. Starting on March 11th. Do I have double a motion? Sh double check and make sure okay. I get it right. 11th, okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to reschedule our meeting from 7 to 6 starting on March. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimously. Thank so, you. So the business meeting two weeks from tonight will still be 7 p.m. Correct? Yeah, we'll start in March. I think it would be okay. better. So. This one about March 11th. Okay. Yeah. Is there another meeting there? We have one two weeks from today, so the 26th. That'll give people more time yeah. to plan in advance. So let's make sure that that gets communicated. Um, while we're talking about that, there was some confusion on how to find out when the board meetings are. Um, it's communicated in a lot of places and in a lot of ways. And Kayla um, kindly made up a graphic today that we can share, and it will tell you exactly where you need to click to find out when the meetings are. So that should um, alleviate any confusion that there might be. Marianne, do you want to do grant committee next time on the business, our next meeting? Because I don't... Say that one. Do you want to discuss the grant committee at the next meeting? Let's move okay. that forward. Okay. I think that would probably be the best thing. Um, anything else? Do you have anything? Executive session. Okay. Evaluation personnel. All right. Otherwise, that's it. All right. 819, we are adjourned. Oh, wait. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ready to get out of here. Big <laughs> Thanks for. We'll do the executive session. Yeah. 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 Yeah